Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Welcome to Layout Building. In this episode, we're going to continue working on our three-rail O-scale layout on our game room, which will soon be home to my model of Santa Fe 3751. After a long time and a lot of work, our game room is nearing completion. The plan is to build a shelf layout below the soffit around the edges of the room up near the ceiling. This is going to be a simple display loop with no turnouts, and we're doing it in three-rail O-scale. In the last episode, we touched on the room prep, hanging brackets for the shelves, and some basic shelf construction. In this episode, we'll be cutting the shelves to length, fitting them, and finishing them. Nicole and I took the corner pieces that I made in the last episode and mounted them to the brackets temporarily. Now I can measure and cut all the straight pieces. I've glued edge molding to 10 8-foot shelf pieces, but some of these will need to be shortened. The moldings are a little messed up on the ends of a couple of the pieces, so those will be good ones to cut down. I've taken one of the boards with a bad molding end and placed it on top of the brackets at the back of the room. I've lined up the good end on one side. The other end overlaps the corner piece. I'll mark it with a pencil. Now I can cut the piece to length. I had to adjust my saw to cut at a slight angle to match the pencil line. After cleaning up the ends with my sander, I can test the fit. The length is good. Because the back wall isn't perfectly straight, it looks like I'll need to trim the back edge of the shelf a little. I'll set the shelf aside and tackle that problem a little later. For now, I want to get all the shelves cut to length. On the sides, I'm laying out the shelves to figure out where I need to cut. It may not be possible in all cases, but I'm trying to keep at least two brackets under each piece of shelving. For strength and to prevent sagging, I want to keep all the seams near a bracket when possible. I'm labeling each piece on the end so I'll know where they go later. Both ends on either side of a seam get a letter. On the train room side, I started with A and I'm working my way up the alphabet. On the cottage side, I started with Z and I'm working backwards. For labeling purposes, both sides begin at the back wall. I'll be taking these down to stain them before installing them permanently. When it comes time to put the shelves back up, I'll just need to match the letters on each seam, A with A, B with B, and so on. The shelf over the window is a special case. It needs to be narrower in the middle to clear the window. I've decided to make this part look like a bridge. With the shelf set in place temporarily, I'll use a pencil to mark the edges of the brackets. I've put the board on some sawhorses and drawn a line down the exact center of the board between the lines that mark where the brackets go. I've put my NMRA gauge on the center line. Now I'll measure the distance between the edges of the board and the gauge. It's a little over two inches on each side. I'll mark lines two inches in from the edges of the board. Checking one more time, I can see that the NMRA gauge fits between the lines with a little room to spare. I want to put molding on the ends, so I'll use a scrap piece of the same oak molding that I used on the other shelves to account for the width. I'll be using these O-scale bridge girder plates from Scenic Express. One is too short for my bridge, so I'll need to splice two together. I want to make sure that at least some of the ribs correspond to each other so it'll look right when spliced. Luckily, it looks like the ends will match the area where the molding will be perfectly. I don't have a cutting guide for this saw, so I'll need to improvise. I'll line up the saw blade with my cut line. Then I'll mark the edge of the saw's base plate with a pencil. I've clamped a piece of scrap wood to the shelf, squaring it up and aligning the edge with the mark I just made. Now I can cut while holding the saw against the scrap wood. I've cut part way through the shelf on both sides. I stopped at the line that marks the edge of the bridge. Next, I'll need to cut lengthwise. I'll start by drilling a hole big enough for the saw blade. I've clamped a longer piece of wood to guide the saw for this cut. It was a nice idea, but my saw blade wants to drift even with the guide. I have to hold the saw at a slight angle to keep it going straight. After making the cuts, I'll clean up the edges with a sander. I'll also use the sander to erase my pencil marks. Next, I'll cut pieces of molding for the exposed ends and for the outside edge of the shelf. I don't need any molding in the bridge area since the bridge sides will eventually cover that. I'll use yellow wood glue and then clamp the moldings in place while they dry. On the outside edge, I need to miter the corners. Now that I have the moldings glued on, I'm going to leave the shelf to dry overnight. Just like I did with the other shelves, I'll sand the excess glue and make sure that the moldings are even. After sanding, I'll test fit the shelf. It looks good. Since there's still a little more woodworking and finishing to do, I'm not going to put the bridge sides on just yet. I'll leave that for another time. You may have noticed that the ends of some of my shelves don't line up with each other vertically. I've cut them to length, but I need a way to lock them securely together. Like a lot of people, Nicole and I have a few pieces of furniture that needed assembly. These furniture kits often use dowel pins to maintain alignment. Thinking about that, I got the idea that I could also use pins to hold the edges of the shelf pieces together. I found these quarter-inch wooden dowel pins at a local hardware store. On Amazon, I found this dowel drilling guide. This tool is designed to hold a drill bit in precise alignment to drill holes in the ends of a board. 
The drilling guide can accommodate a variety of drill sizes. Since I have quarter inch dowel pins, I'm using the quarter inch guide and a quarter inch drill bit. I decided that two pins on each end is probably adequate. I also decided to set them two inches in from the edges of the board. Using a pencil, I've made marks where the dowel pins will go. The drilling guide has a mark to help align it with the pin locations. I just need to match the mark on the guide with my pencil line. Now I can clamp the tool in place and use my drill to make a hole. After drilling both holes, I can insert the pins. I'm only gluing the pins on one end of each shelf. I'll leave the holes open on the other end. It looks like the pins will do a good job keeping the shelves in alignment, however it would be very difficult to assemble all the shelves with fixed pins. On the last piece on each side, and on the pieces between the corners on the end walls, I'll need to do something else. My idea is to use a Forstner bit to make a 1 inch hole on the top side of the shelf near the pin hole. I've made a mark one and a quarter inches back from the edge on the same line that I drew for the pin guide. I'll drill a small pilot hole part way into the wood first. Then I'll use the Forstner bit. I've only drilled deep enough to intersect the dowel pin hole, not all the way through. None of this will be visible from underneath. Now the dowel pin hole is accessible from the rear. My idea is to push the pin completely into the end of the shelf. Once the shelf is in place, I can use the holes I made to push the pin back in the other direction part way into the adjacent shelf. I got some plastic plugs to cover the holes, though since they're on top they shouldn't be that visible anyway. As I mentioned earlier, the back wall isn't completely straight. It bows out a little in the middle. It's not much, but it's enough to push the shelf out and keep the ends from lining up with the corner pieces. I've clamped a couple pieces of scrap wood to the corners as temporary supports for the shelf. With the shelf temporarily set in place, I can see that it's against the wall here, but there's about a quarter inch gap on each end. This is a wedge-shaped wood shim from the hardware store. These are often used to help install door frames and such. I've cut down the bigger end until it's the same thickness as the gap on the ends of the shelf. Thankfully it worked out so that the gaps on both ends of my shelf were roughly the same size. Now I can use the shim to mark my cut line by moving it along the shelf and drawing along the edge with a pencil. I'll cut along the line. The shelf now sits against the wall along its entire length and the edges line up nicely with the corner pieces. I've mocked up the shelves and they're looking pretty good. The dowel pins are providing support to the ends of the shelves and maintaining good alignment. Now that I'm satisfied that all the shelf pieces are fitting properly, I can take them down and start finishing the boards. I'll start by using a tack cloth to get rid of any leftover sawdust. Next I'll use some pre-stained wood conditioner which helps the stain penetrate the wood more evenly. I'll brush it on all the shelf pieces and leave it to dry overnight. Now I can start staining. I'm using this combination stain and polyurethane from Minwax. The color is Bombay Mahogany, which I think works well with the warm grays and copper colors that we chose for the walls and ceiling. The stain brush is on and doesn't need to be spread with a rag. I'm starting on top since that area will be the least visible. Later when we flip the boards to do the bottom, any drips will end up on top where they won't show. I'll give the boards a quick sanding with 320 grit paper before applying a second coat. This will get rid of any roughness in the finish. Any problem areas like the drips on this edge can be sanded with some coarser paper, 120 grit in this case. Nicole is helping me with the second coat on the tops of the shelves, and she'll be helping me with the bottoms as well. We're going to go ahead and finish up all the staining and let the boards dry for a few days. I think that's a good place to leave things for now. Nicole and I are pretty happy with the way the shelves are turning out so far, and we really like the color. Next time we'll get to the fun part. We'll put in the shelves permanently and install the track. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. <laughs>